top five people to throw out of your life in 2020. A loser hangs out with just any old person. A loser lets people come into their life and do whatever the f*** they want. And the loser believes society lies that we just got to love everybody because everybody's equal. And everybody is a special snowflake in the sky. And if we all just go out into the fields, align our chakras, put some f crystals up our ass, and then bleach our our kundalini spirits shall align, and we shall all ascend to nirvana in a giant cloud of Bitcoin. There is a great divide coming, and it's already happening. Technology is separating the dumb from the smart, and the people who are leaning on technology to better themselves are becoming richer. The people that are leaning on technology to quite honestly, just become bigger, lazier, fatter slobs are becoming dumber and more susceptible to deception, financial extortion by big governments and corporations, right? We're seeing this time and time again. You have got to protect yourself from toxic people and toxic energies and quite frankly, losers, okay? These are people who don't respect you these are people who don't respect your time. These are people that will inevitably pull you down more than lift you up, okay? So we're going to talk about it. Let's start at number five. Number five is the nagger, okay? This is some woman, usually, in your life who will not f shut the f up. She will not leave you alone. Nothing is ever good enough. The nagger comes in multiple forms, okay? The nagger can be your mom. The nagger can be your aunt. The nagger can be your wife. The nagger can be your girlfriend, all right? Nagging is such a toxic black hole that people are trapped in, right? And these people who are constantly nagging, and this is more of the female type, these people have made history. In the, in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, it is said, it is better for a man to live on the roof of his house than inside of the house with a quarrelsome woman. You know, say in the, in, the, in the islands, you're quarreling, you're quarreling all the time, right? They say, you're fighting, you're fighting. What are you quarreling for? It's an old word. When they say, you quarrel, you're looking for trouble. You, you know, I would, give you, I would give you this glass right here. And instead of saying like, oh, this is a pretty nice glass, you would, you would look in and be like, oh, my God. There is one spot right here. I can't believe that you would give me a cup with one little spot on it. What do you think I am? Do you just treat all women like this? And now you have a... And I can't believe you would do this to me. And then this is what most of you guys do. Reactively, you're like, oh my God. All right, I'm so sorry. Here, I got this stainless steel cup. Oh my God, stainless steel? What do you think I am, a prisoner in Vietnam? Are we in a POW retention camp? How dare you give me this? I just never thought, this is always your problem. You never listen to me. It's endless, guys. It's endless, and it will never, ever stop, okay? By acknowledging the nagger and by acknowledging the situation that the nagger endlessly brings up, okay? Because you have to understand, the, the person who is a nagger, mentally, they are off. Something is wrong, okay? This may be somebody who, as a child, their parents were constantly critical of them and nothing was ever good enough. And now they are actually projecting this 
through their behavior on you as they recreate their childhood. Okay. The woman who is nagging all the time, it, it's just never, ever, ever worth it. The mental energy you have to put up with, with even confronting the nagger and dealing with this nagger, this person will drain you of priceless morsels of energy that you could use towards hitting new personal best in the gym, creating an online business or a, a, a brick and mortar business or real estate business or you know, maximizing your life insurance so you can funnel money into there so you minimize your taxes, whatever. Okay, your cryptocurrency portfo portfolio. All of these priceless energy points that you get limited amounts of that do deplete as you age as well, okay? Those energy points are being misused and they're being thrown down a black hole of waste because the nagger never changes. And then they think, oh, I just got to change. They, they will never change. This type of person, you've got to throw out of your life. You've got to throw them completely out of your life. And I'm not talking about like, okay, well, I only hang out with them Monday, Wednesday, Friday. No, this person absolutely needs to be gone. All of these people we're talking about, these top five people, you've got to block them on all social media or unfollow, whatever. If they text message you, you type, uh, you put hide notifications. Your phone is not going to buzz. Your phone is not going to alert. Nothing. If you want to block them, block them. Zero physical presence is allowed. They're definitely not allowed in your house. They're definitely not allowed in your car. They're definitely not allowed within a 10-yard radius of you. Get them out permanently and forever. That right there is number five, the nagger. Number four, this one really, this, this particular male makes me sick to my stomach. It's funny, you never encounter these, these type of people in jiu-jitsu gyms and Muay Thai gyms because I feel like these people, there's a correlation with them never being punched in the face and their behavior. I'm telling you, a, a punch in the face, for a man, a punch in the face puts a man on the righteous path. For a woman, just being a little ugly, just having one or two insecurities. Maybe her titties are a little awkward or one bigger than the other. Maybe she's got some big, or, you know, she's got that one snaggle tooth, right? You could overlook it because you're a benevolent man. But a little bit of ugliness puts a woman on a righteous path as well. Number four is the passive aggressive snake. In the world of social media, the passive aggressive snake lies around every corner. This is why I hate the corporate world. I had a guy who is a real, is a, I'm telling you, with the British guys, it's either I love them or I hate them. There is no in between. Either if you're British, I love you, or you're British, I hate you. I had this one British guy, I kid you not. This is what I'm talking about, one of these passive aggressive snakes. This is the kind of person that will leave kind of snarky remarks on your social media. I intentionally bait people on my social media as a psychological trap to see who is who. And I, I, I for example, like I recently put up a post, right, on my Instagram. Let me see if I can pull it up here. So here we go. All right, guys. That's me. I put a post up right here, okay? Lesson time Y'all are about to get taken into the matrix. I put, it's difficult and isolating to be this. And then I put this little bar right here, okay? Now, first of all, if you guys think I posted this for my male fans, boy, oh boy, have you got a lot to learn, okay? I'm posting those hot dude life for all the ladies that love me and contact me on the low, all right? Now, I have access to see how every single person voted on that individual post. And I see the ones that didn't vote all the way max. Guys, I know I'm not the most amazing man in the world. I'm not 
fucking delusional, okay? But at the same time, when you have people who will vote low on your social media, things like that, or vote negatively on polls, or leave passive-aggressive comments like, wow, another post with you showing yourself off. Guys like that, they don't they don't get it, right? Because when I would go, I okay, when I would like be in Florida and stuff, I would always go tanning, right? I would hit the gym, and I had plan. I worked out at Planet Fitness. I know I'm not perfect, but I had like the the the, the black card membership, whatever. So I would go and tan after get my get my you know the the healthy sun rays going on, and I look good with the tan. I'm a man. I would get guys leaving comments on my Facebook saying stuff like, oh, you're going to go tanning again today, bro? That's really gay, bro. Oh, what are you going to go? You're going to go put on a bikini when you do that as well, right? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll, I'll get your girl to oil up my ass while I'm at it because I'm not doing it for idiots like you who can't see, you know, the red truth behind my actions. Okay, you're not on my level. And more importantly, these type of guys that want to hate on you, keep in mind, the hate never comes in person. Actually, I take that back. The hate does come in person, and I'm going to talk about it. This is in protected environments. These guys, they would never, ever say that shit to my face. People talk a lot of shit to Donovan on the internet. They would and die if Donovan confronted them in a face-to-face -face situation. Donovan is a terrifying man. Donovan is over six foot. That is a beast of a man, okay? These internet nerds, they would never say that. It's astronomically worse when this person claims to be your friend and then they make these passive-aggressive marks, okay? This is just a form of jealousy and quite honestly, hatred of you. And they don't have the balls and they don't have the courage to manifest their opinion and tell you how they really feel in real life. So they take this passive aggressive road. These passive aggressive people are the worst, dude, worse. These people silently watch you and they, they root for you to fail because it's easier for them to feel better about themselves as you fail than it is for them to put the effort into lifting themselves up and moving themselves up to the next level, okay? Keep that in mind. Another situation that, that I really hate was, like I said, there's this British dude that I used to work with. Real creep. Uh, I heard from the grapevine he's getting a lot of harassment charges against him in – the corporate world, which serves him right for being a weirdo. You guys are going to love this, especially knowing who I am. We were out drinking at a corporate event one time. And he has this little other British lackey who just, who's Mr. Jabberjaw, blah, 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 talk, 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 right? The guy was, was uh, getting lippy with me, and I was just like, look, dude. I was like, Chris, listen. You're doing a lot of talking. And I, and I understand. You've probably never been punched in the face because he was going on in front of people how he would whoop my ass, right? It's always funny. The people that he can't, who can't fight are the ones that want to go and try to make a statement publicly that they can fight. And I said, listen, buddy, I understand you're trying your best to be cool. And I remember when I was a loser like you, right? And I said this to him. He was really pissed off, but I just told him straight. And I, I look him right in the eye, too. And I said, there's only one way to find out who is the better fighter? So if you'd like to step outside and have a friendly scrap between us gaijin, the Japanese police don't give a shit about us, right? I mean, you're clearly better than me, so this, is, this will be effortless win for you. And then he goes the typical coward route saying, well, I, I wouldn't want to hurt you. You know, I, I'm, I'm really conscientious of hurting you. And I was like, yeah, okay, <laughs> sounds great. I was like, well, you sit there and you drink your beer. And uh, when, you're, when your vagina shrivels up and a little piece finally grows out and you decide to be a man and walk the walk that you're talking, let me know. So then uh, old buddy, his, his little British, uh, the, the creep guy, this guy's name's Liam, right? I hate British dudes named Liam. I don't know what it is about them, but they're all a bunch of weirdo crybaby losers. So Liam trots on over 
And Liam didn't like the fact that I was mouthing off to his buddy. He also didn't like the fact that I was outperforming him sales-wise, like f crushing him, right? And this guy's like some dude who's like, oh, I'm a big recruiting expert. At this point, I had been recruiting for, in this particular department, three months. Liam comes over and puts his arm around me and he takes, and he's a manager and we're at a corporate meeting. So I, you know, I, I'm, I'm aware of what's going on. And he takes some French fries and he takes some ketchup and he pushes them in my face and thought that this was okay because it was corporate world and he was a manager. He put his arm around it. I immediately took his arm and I shoved him off and I said, go over to that table right now and get me some napkins. And you better believe with the quickness that motherfucker ran over there and immediately the, the beta male snake-like venom started spewing from his mouth oh i'm so sorry bro you know it was just a joke and you know i i just i thought we were friends and you know we we're good mates and then this is okay man and i knew deep down inside this guy didn't like me because i didn't like him either he's a weirdo and he's he's living his own hell right now because i've seen his wife um and no wonder she's so ugly it's pushing him to uh harassment is just so ugly so <laughs> whatever for him so so that being said i just told him i said liam listen guy if you ever do that again i will beat your ass this is your final warning these guys are they guys like this who have never been punched in the face who's never been in a fight okay they live in a false reality if i were a hothead dude i would have taken the knife on the table and stabbed that mother nobody puts ketchup and french fries in my face without a stern stern warning coming and this is only because i was in a corporate setting we're out we're public if i laid this dude out then i'm because i was i was tight with the top guy the the number one guy in the company that's the guy who brought me on board he got me a visa this is a good friend of mine you know, changed my life, this guy. So the last thing um, I need to do is make him look bad as well, right? So that right there is a situation where the passive-aggressive snake escalated to the point of physical confrontation. But if I didn't, if I didn't stick up for myself, if I just sat there and laughed like, oh, ha, 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 that's, yeah, it's so funny, bro, that's hilarious – then the abuse would have continued as well. Number three is the drunken junkie. We all have that buddy who has just one too many drinks in one too many occasions, or, you know, he's always doing some kind of drug. And, I, and I'm not talking soft shit like, you know, smoking pot in states that it's legal and eating edibles and whatever like that. That's fine. But I'm talking the guy who's just always got to have a couple drinks right he's always got to have three or four drinks every day he's always got to you're, you're always picking up his slack at the bar as he gets a little sloppy or he's passing out or he's starting fights or they're slapping him because he's walking up to them he's like hey bitch, you're got a great or whatever right <laughs> you want to minimize people who are liabilities like this because a it's not a good look to be constantly associating with the drunk or a junkie it's just not okay b it it's it's not going to be good for your reputation as you're going to be like oh well there's john the guy who's always hanging out with that junkie i don't know steve sorry to any steves in the chat but, you know, there's John, and he's always hanging out with that junkie Steve. Like, what do you – and, you know, that's when the rumors start. They're going to think, like, wh why do you think Steve is always hanging out with John? Is he f sucking his dick for f money? Is he f enabling him? Why is he always keeping that guy around? You guys, don't ever make the mistake of thinking by keeping around low-value men – this is going to make you high value, okay? You should be striving in your life to make yourself the biggest loser in your group. And what I mean by the biggest loser is that you are 
you're the least rich, you're the least intelligent, you're you're the the runt of the group, okay? What that does is that allows you to be dragged to the top by these guys. Do you understand me? Don't ever like, you know, just because you are 27% body fat, but you hang out with a guy who's 35% body fat, that doesn't mean you're fit and you're in shape. That means you're hanging out with fat. That's what it means. Okay? You have to be protective of your reputation and who you chill out with. Okay? Despite what people are saying, your reputation and opinion of people's perception of you, it does matter. Keep that in mind because, you, you know, being around these people and their drunken, junky behaviors, this should rub off on you as well. Okay? You got to be careful of hanging out with these drunken junkies because their bad behaviors are going to rub off on you too. You're going to eventually start sn sniffing some too much coke or whatever or drinking one too many drinks and and this kind of person will will eventually erode on your lifestyle people who hang out with each other they eventually become like a symbiosis of the two personalities if you are a stronger personality you can pull that person up but i tell you dealing with drunks and junkies and shit like that it's not worth it get the fuck out of there don't deal with them that is a, a cancer to your life okay and number one this person is the purest form of cancer and lowest value, lowest value, nothing, okay? The complainer, the f complainer. If you want me to hate you quickly, I want you to f complain around me, okay? Gary Vaynerchuk, right, he's a really big social media influencer. I just, like, by proximity of his reach, I happen to just to see him once in a while. Um, he's actually my inspiration for um, grinding it out and doing these live stream shows every day. And he's right because it, it has paid off. But he said this. He says complaining ha inherently has zero value. That's why you – idiots in the rule zero facebook page who want to just post about oh my god feminism this and then this is that and oh my god everything's terrible and the world's burning and blah 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 blah, blah. dude shut the fuck up okay we get it it's 2020 we don't want to hear about the problems we're well aware of the problems we want solutions sitting around complaining crying this is the equivalent the male complainer is the equivalent of the female nagger, okay? I got I got no people that just waking up and it's just like, all right, what are we going to be upset about today? What are we mad about today? How has the world injusticed you in the first world country that you live in? Let's hear about it, right? Complaining is just cancer, cancer, the purest form of cancer.